Uh oh, you guys hear me? The sound okay? Bear with me. Check, check. Okay. I think you guys can hear me now. Okay. Uh, let me switch back to my microphone though. Cause one sec, one sec. Bear with me. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. Let's see if this works. One sec. Check, check, check. Okay. Are we good? We good? I think we're good. Let me know. Yep. Okay, good. I don't know why that happened, but uh, anyway, guys, you didn't miss much anyway. I was just saying, uh, what a week. What a, what a crazy week. This was definitely the worst week we've seen so far here in 2024. Um, definitely needed a happy hour after this week. And so I am glad to be here with you guys tonight. I'm so stoked to be back for another Dividend Happy Hour. Welcome, everyone. Hope you guys all had a fantastic week. And, you know, the red actually is you know, it stings, but it's also something to be excited about. So I'm sure a lot of us uh, are pretty stoked about it. But um, yeah, I don't know. We'll get into some of that, guys. But before we do anything, let's kick it off the best way we know how with a quick cheer. So grab whatever you're sipping on tonight. If you got your water, your milk, your energy drink, your Coke Zero. Here we go. And uh, here's to, we're going to switch it up. Here's to some delicious dividend stock discounts, which after this week and probably with next week will become even more in abundance than they are today. So here's to that. Here's to you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, putting up with the technical difficulties. I don't know what happened there, but uh, anyway, cheers. Let me know. Um, let me know a few things here in the live chat or in the comments below. If you're watching the replay, number one, what did you buy this week? Which stocks did you add to your portfolio? I bet we're going to see there's, there's three or four that I have in mind that I think are going to be pretty popular tonight. So yeah, let me know what you guys picked up this week. Number one, number two, what are you sipping on tonight? You guys saw I'm sipping a Coke zero over there. It's been a uh, classic lately. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys brought to drink tonight for the dividend happy hour. And number three, let me know if anything cool happened in your guys' portfolio this week. I want to hear about all the milestones. I want to hear about all the accomplishments. I don't think we're, we're going to see any all time highs in the portfolios this week, but maybe you guys hit some new income milestones. Maybe you you know, picked up your hundredth share of SCHD this week. Anything cool that happened to you guys, uh, share it here in the live chat. We'll go through it. But uh, let me go through the chat actually and see who we got in the building. Um, let's see. And in case you're just now tuning in, just now hopping into the stream, welcome aboard. Um, let's see. Wow. Five o'clock. Okay. A lot of no audio. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, for the heads up on that. Uh, I see Kevin here. I see Adon. Nigo, good to see you. We got Pat, who picked up some um, Next Era Energy, right? And SDHD. Uh, we got Cody, Citizen of the Year. We got Katie, Luis. Yeah, wow. Down 2.8K just today. Down 8K for the month. I'll show you guys what's been cooking up in, in my portfolio in just a moment. But, man, how you feeling, Luis? That's, uh, you know, you're probably, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe you're you're used to seeing bigger swings because I know your portfolio is bigger. So it might, maybe it doesn't phase you that much, but yeah. How are you feeling, man? The eight, eight K for the month, uh, two, two point eight K today. That's a lot. Um, Justin here started a position in visa. Good job, Justin. Welcome aboard. I see wing addiction, Hassan, uh, the legendary Jay Conway. Good to see you. Uh, Shannon's here. Welcome aboard Shannon. Happy to have you. Um, Charles, Charles, for the first time in a while, I don't think we've, we've seen you, man, but, uh, happy to have you here. We got Kevin, the backdoor assassin in the building, snuck in like a thief in the night, uh, mountain high. Good to see you. Elijah. Yeah. Good old cheat clapping. Couldn't have said it better. Any, it couldn't have said it any better myself. Yeah. Uh, we got the lean, mean Dean machine here. Happy to see you, my friend, uh, C pros, Pat. Uh, Thomas just listened to the newsletter. Tell me that's you playing the piano. I know it's probably not, but I like the addition. No, it's not me playing the piano. Um, I can play the piano. I haven't, I, I haven't played for, for a couple of years, but, um, yeah, I do know how to play the piano. I got my guitar right over here too. Um, I haven't played that for, I used to play every day, even if it was just for like five minutes, 10 minutes, just jam, jam for a minute, but I haven't touched it for a couple months. I tend to do that though. I go like through phases where I'm into it and I fall out of it. I've kind of done that 
pretty much my entire life with the guitar. Uh, Geo here. <laughs> I like what he's saying. There you go. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, TKR, good to see you. Mario in the building. All right. We got Roly. There you go. All right. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Now we're, Charles says, don't become like Russ. I'll tell you what, I would be, if I turn out to be like Russ when I'm his age, 46, I think, 47. I think Russ is going to be 47 in, next Saturday. Um, we were just talking about this the other day. You know, if I'm like Russ when I'm in his age, I, I would be, I'd be honored. Russ is a good guy. Um, and we met up. I don't know if you guys saw the community post I put up, but uh, Russ and I actually got to get together. Let me see if I can pull up the the picture that I posted. I'm sure some of you guys missed it, but yeah. So Russ was in town visiting. Uh, well, he was in town with his family. Just visiting town, not anyone in particular. And we were able to get together for a little in-person dividend happy hour. It was fun. We got together, had a beer, and um, you know, just shot the breeze for for an hour, hour or so. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was really cool to cool to hang with him. Let me put this on the screen real quick. You guys see that? There we go. Me and the legend himself. Um, this was right outside the Paris Hotel. You can see the Cosmo back there. You can see the walkway for the Bellagio. Behind the Cosmo, you can see the Aria. So it was fun. Uh, but anyway, back to the live chat. Let's see. Yeah, Peanut messed with the audio. There you go. He sure did. Peanut's actually down here in his little house taking a nap. Um, yeah, Pat, thank you. Two more weeks until the big day. Two weeks from tomorrow um, will be tying the knot. So very exciting. It's coming up quick. Um, I will not be streaming. I will not be streaming the wedding number one, and I, I will not be uh, doing a dividend happy hour the night before. So two Fridays from now, um, you guys won't see me. But let's see. Let's keep going. We got Play Twenty Three, my Vegas neighbor, sipping on just orange juice, seven a.m. vacationing in Thailand for thirty days. That's awesome. Have fun. Very cool. Thanks for uh, tuning in on your vacation. Um, okay, as far as the pickups, we got Hassan here. Some Mendel, uh, Mondelez, Mendelez, <laughs> some Mondelez, Starbucks, and MSCI. I always forget which one this is. MSCI. Yeah, I'm, I, what is this company? Huh. Okay. Um, yeah, Starbucks, I knew it was going to be a popular one. I think we're going to see a lot more Starbucks here in the chat. Yep. Dean opened a position in Starbucks. Um, Let's see, Charles, some SD, a handful of different stock, uh, tickers here. Um, there we go, Mountain High with a nice little shopping spree. Sold Glad and picked up Blue Owl, Procter & Gamble, Starbucks, and KMI's Kinder Morgan? Or is KMI Kimberly Clark? No, that's Kim, uh, KMB is Kimberly Clark. So KMI Kinder Morgan and added to Agree, Bristol Myers, uh, Myers Squibb, British American Tobacco, Altria, and CNQ. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, Wing Addiction drinking some sweet tea. Some sweet tea. Picked up a handful of great stocks here. Coca-Cola. Realty income. I, I had a feeling that was going to be another. I have a feeling that's going to be another popular one tonight too. Uh, Realty income. Main Street. Hershey Company. SHD. And of course, Starbucks. There we go. Beachy Properties and, and Johnson & Johnson. I think these ones are going to be up there as well. Yeah, I see another realty income. We see some more. Um, some more realty income, more Johnson and Johnson, uh, Vici properties as well. Nice. Yeah. You guys are buying some good stuff out there. Good job. Um, thunderous fixation, not a dividend stock, but tons of SoFi just reached 11 K on the portfolio. Very, very nice. Uh, sipping on a post gym smoothie. What did you, uh, what did you work out tonight? Let us know in the live chat. What the, uh, what the splits looking like with the training split, what you got going on there? Um, yeah, here we go. Here's some more, um, Oh, this is cool. Charles says my kids are seven shares away from 100 shares of SCHD. That's that's great. Your kids have more shares of SCHD than I do. Good for them. Good for them, my friend. They are on the right path. Um, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Picked up uh, six shares of UNH, I think, right? Two shares of SCHD and Voodoo. <laughs> uh, Vu. And I sell Coca-Cola probably to put into, I'm thinking sold Coca-Cola to buy UNH, Microsoft, and Costco. There you go. 
Yeah, there we go, Mario. Nice, nice uh, little milestone here. Rounded up to ten shares of Microsoft. Good for you. Um, let me show you guys. We'll jump over to the screen in a second. I'll show you what ha what's happening in um in my portfolio real quick. But I'm I'm I second this right here. Profiles hurting. The the portfolio is hurting. You know, stings a little bit, but good time to buy for sure. Um, impressive. Exactly. That's exactly what I do all around. Number two, all around. Good job. Um, let's see. Yeah, Luis, you hit the nail on the head. At the end of the day, to me, this is just an opportunity to buy more. Most of my positions are in the green, so those in the the red are just uh, stocks on sale to me. Let's jump over to the uh, to the screen real quick, guys, and I'll show you what's cooking up over here. So we're taking a look at my dividend portfolio tracking spreadsheet, which I'm sure you guys have heard me say this a thousand times. But if you want to check it out. There's a link to download the spreadsheet in the description of the video. It's totally free. Um, just click the link. It'll take you right there. So just today, I'm down 1%. I think yesterday, I was down... Uh, actually, no, not yesterday. Uh, Wednesday on the 10th, the big day. The big red day, I was down 1.4%, maybe 1.5%. So just this week, I think I'm down between 25 and 3%. Um, which it's, you know, I was prior to this, I was pushing 70K. I was, I was dollars away from 70,000 at one point. Um, in fact, we can look at that exact number. Let me pull up GetQuin real quick, which is another por portfolio tracker that I really like using. Um, you can also check this one out for free. There's a link to it in the description of the video. One thing that I, I'm not the biggest fan of that they do is it automatically creates this unified stable dollar right here. So I have to delete that like every day. Um, but anyway, going back up here, so here's the performance for the week, right? So here's the 10th. We're coming into the 10th. Portfolio is looking strong. At a high, it won't show it here, but at a high, I was at like 68,000, and then boom, big drop right here. Or 69,000, excuse me. I was at just touched 69,000 at one point. Um, so yeah, it's really come down a lot this week. I think on Wednesday, the, that big day, I, I, I was down maybe $1,200 just that one day. So that for me, that's that's a lot. Um, and then even seeing a seven hundred five dollar loss today is pretty substantial as well. And if we go over to the positions page here, we'll zoom in, see what some of the um, the worst performers were today. So Abby's down, and Abby guys actually has been sneakily down. They, they've they've sneakily seen some pretty substantial losses here in the last month. So just in the last thirty days, Abby is down over ten percent. So it's really seeing a big pullback. It seems like a lot of Healthcare stocks are seeing a decent pullback right now. Johnson & Johnson is another one. Um, so Wettis, which is a company that I've been talking a, a bit more about lately and, and have been really excited about lately too. I think this is a great looking company. They were down 8% just today. Holy cow. I'm just now seeing this. Holy cow. Down 8%, almost 8% just today, uh, which leaves them with a drop in the last month of 18%. So... There's some news though, and I'm just now seeing this for the first time. Sorry, guys, we're 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 just going where the wind blows. So Zoetis hits 52-week low on adverse events linked to arthritis drugs. Okay. Oh. And okay. Oh, you know what? Okay. So Labrella is one of their more popular drugs. It's a an arthritis drug for pets, and. The European Medicines Agency has recorded over 12.3 thousand reports of side effects. Oh, and more than 7,700 cases linked to Silencia. Hmm. You know what's interesting? I'm sure it's related, but since I started looking more into Zoetis, I've been seeing a lot of commercials on TV for Labrella. Sure, that's not a coincidence. Okay, so, but yeah, like I said, these are two of their bigger... Um, Bigger pharmaceuticals. So the duo duo helped Zo Zoetis generate. I cannot talk. The duo helped Zoetis generate 1.2 billion and almost 1 billion um, in revenue from from both segments just in the quarter. Okay. Hmm. The company has touted the drugs as the next big opportunity. They said the drugs were safe and noted that with over 18 million injections. Side effects linked stood at less than 1%. So that doesn't sound like a, a large number. And I wonder if that's above average or if that's below average for something like this. 
Side effects were relatively rare and did not seem directly linked to the drug or its active ingredients. Overall, we don't see anything materially incremental in this report and remain constructive, particularly after the sell-off. You know, I haven't finished my research. So before I even say that, this seems like a short-term issue. This doesn't seem like the type of thing that would completely wreck Zoetis. Like they're not going to go bankrupt off, off of today's news, in, in my opinion. I'd be very, very surprised if that was the case. And so um, with that, with, you know, a little short-term adversity comes potential long-term opportunity. So another 8% discount on top of an already pretty substantial decline in share price that on 25% year to date. This is one of those guys, one of those stocks. And I, this is what I was about to say. I have not finished my research yet into it. Um, but this is one of those where it's, it seems like a very opportune, opportune time to buy some shares. Like if I'm going to buy some shares of this company, then now seems to be a pretty decent time to do it. Or at least start dollar cost averaging. Cause it's getting cheaper by the day, by the day, apparently. Um, but it seems like one of those where it's like, okay, just take advantage of the opportunity and keep, keep researching it as time goes on and, and stuff like that. But, uh, anyway, tangent over, that's very, very interesting to see. Sorry guys. I, I totally went off, uh, the beaten path there. Some of the other ones that have seen a big decline say in the portfolio were Chevron, Coca-Cola, KRC, which, which had a pretty poor week. Uh Oh, you guys go on, buddy. Hi buddy. You see him? You know what that means? Uh, Lowe's was down one and a half percent. Main Street's down almost two percent. Starbucks down another one point one four four percent. So a lot of stocks down, a lot of companies down over one percent today. So very very interesting, guys. Um, but yeah, that's what's been been happening in the portfolio. And as you guys know, um, you know, pretty much all year my go to has been to buy Visa. I've been dollar cost averaging into Visa every. I think every single week so far in 2024. Um, but a couple of these companies, I'll leave them nameless for now because I'm talking about it in this Sunday's video. A couple of these companies are just looking too good to pass up. And I'm really thinking I might put the pause on Visa for now and transition into buying some of the other companies in my portfolio where I have an opportunity, a pretty, pretty solid opportunity to average down on, um, especially with you know, Zoetis coming down as much as it, as it is. This is one that I, I've been really considering for the portfolio. And, you know, I might have, I might just have to jump in and, and, and start building out a little position in that. Um, and this is the, you know, this is the double-edged sword of dividend investing. This is one of the double-edged swords because there's quite a few, you know, we like to talk about we, uh, the discounts. You know, we we like to see our stocks cheap. We like to buy them for a lower share price instead of a higher share price. You know, lower share price, higher dividend yield, all that jazz. We always talk about that. Um, but you know, it gets to a point we're kind of starting to see it now, where where there's becoming too many opportunities. You either have don't ha it, it, you either can't find anything good to buy, or it's the complete opposite, and there's too many different different places to put your money. And so that can be a bit overwhelming, and that's a double edged sword. It's like you're darned if you do, you're darned if you don't, you know. So, but I would rather uh, I'd rather have numerous opportunities to choose from than than none at all. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I guess we'll take it. Anyway. Sorry, I'm I'm about 12 minutes behind in the chat. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of ta uh, comments like this. I'm so both both are true in regards to Russ and myself. Russ is very tall. I think he's Russ, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think you're like maybe 6'2 or 6'3 or maybe even probably 6'2 or 6'3. So he's pretty tall. He's a Laker. Um he could have played for the uh the Bulls for sure. And um I'm average height. Like I'm, I'm on the shorter side, but I'm at its average. I'm about five, eight, I'm five, eight. So that's not too entirely short, but definitely I'm, um, I look like a drawer, a dwarf standing next to Russ. So, um, let's see, let's keep going. Kevin Burgess in the building. Hey there, Kevin. Good to see you, my friend. Um, Dexter, how do you like the blossom app? I really like the blossom app. Um, it's a it's a really good community of investors, and if you guys aren't already on Blossom, I'd highly recommend you check it out. There's a link to Blossom. Uh, there should be a link to Blossom in the description of the live stream here. You just click the link; it'll take you right there. But basically, Blossom is a it's a social uh, social app, social media app, particular specifically for investors. Um, there's also some portfolio tracking going on over there as well. But 
um, the draw to Blossom, in my opinion, is, is the social aspect. So it's a great place, a great community of investors. There's now over 100,000 different investors using Blossom. So the community over there is growing really quick. So um, you guys definitely check it out. And also on that note, I just started on a similar note, I suppose. I just started posting to Twitter again earlier this week. So if you guys aren't following me over there, shoot me a follow um, on there as well. If you guys are on the on the platform, but yeah, check out Blossom. Check it out on Twitter. Also doing some stuff on Instagram. I posted a I posted a funny video earlier today over there. So um, check it out over there. I, I'm I'm trying to be everywhere. It's tough. It is tough. Okay, let's keep going though. There we go. Thunderous fixation. Chest and tries. Good job. Good stuff. Um, let's see. Let's keep going. Trying to get caught up here in the chat. Okay, I see a lot of you guys. Um, a lot of you guys uh, picked up some or picking up some Zoetis. Good, good, good. There you go. You guys see Peanut? Yeah. Okay. Looks like I'm all caught up. Uh, caught up in the chat. A uh, good question right here. At 49.9k subs, how close are you? Um, I think I'm about. 80 subscribers away from 50,000 and uh, which is so crazy. So crazy guys. And uh, let me take this opportunity just to thank you guys for all the support. Cause it obviously, you know, as cliche as it is, and I, I know I say it a lot, other people say it a lot, but it's true. You know, they wouldn't be possible with, um, without all you hooligans. So thank you guys. I'm really fortunate to be able to do this and, uh, you guys keep me going. So cheers. Thank you. Uh, Jordan says this is a good question before I, I do get to Jordan though. Let me say what's up to my man, Darth. Good to see you, man. What are you, uh, Darth, what are you getting into this, this Friday night? Um, what are you, okay. So back to Jordan, what are your thoughts on SCHG? Just bought some this week. So let's go check it out. I think SCHG, it's not one that I've spent a lot of time with, but I, I've, I've, I've seen it pop up a lot in the comments lately. So I think SCHG, SCHG is the Schwab growth dividend or <laughs> growth dividend, the Schwab growth ETF right here. So yeah, the Schwab US large cap growth ETF, you know, first things first, I uh, see really strong performance in the last year over the last five years, a really solid performance as well. Um, another thing that I noticed right off the bat is a very low expense ratio. So I do like to see that taking a look at the top 10 holdings before I click this, I'm just going to guess. You know, I'm going to guess these some most of these top 10 holdings are going to be the likes of Nvidia, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google. You know, I'm guessing it's going to be a lot of those those type of stocks in the top 10, which I mean, it would make sense, large cap. Um, oh, look at that. Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Google or Alphabet. Uh, I forgot a couple of these, but you know, and I, I I don't say that in a disparaging way at all either. Obviously, these all of these companies have performed really well, um, and so you know it seems it seems overall to be a really effective growth ETF. You know, um, if you were looking for something maybe a little bit less diversified than the S and P five hundred, then this could be a good option. I'm curious to know, and I, I'm asking this sincerely. I want to get your guys's. Um, I want to get your guys's opinion on this, what would be the draw? I, I'm, and I'm asking, cause I, I really don't know what would be the draw to investing in something like SCHG, this ETF here, just instead of investing in like VU or the S and P 500, what would be, what would be the draw to, to this particular ETF over just the S and P, um, where actually, if we go back here, let's, you know what, let's do this. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to this website here, this ETF fund overlap website, which if you guys have never used this before, it's very handy. You just put in two different um, ETFs and it'll tell you how much overlap there is between those two funds. So we're going to do this with VU, the S&P 500, Vanguard S&P 500 ETF and SCHG. Let's find the overlap here. So, okay. So this is what this tells us. There are 139 overlapping holdings between the two. So between these two ETFs, they have 139 different stocks in common. 28, 27.5% of VU's holdings, so a quarter, basically this number right here, I think, if I'm reading this right, are in SCHG. And then almost 
60% of SCHG is already in the S&P 500. So there seems to be a lot of overlap between these two funds with the biggest over overlap coming from companies like Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, and Meta, which have driven a lot of returns, um, a lot of the returns for, for both of these, these two ETFs. So yeah, I, I guess just going back to the question, what would be the draw to something like SCHG as opposed to just the S&P? Okay. Darth says SCHG, and that's something I should have looked at too. SCHG has beaten VU, the S&P 500, in the last five years. So maybe less diversification, better returns. Thomas says the draw is to invest in SCHG for growth. It grows three times as much, and you get closer to living off dividends. I didn't even look at the dividend stats. You can sell it and buy SCHD. Uh, okay. Um. I actually didn't see this. Did you see 3M spinoff of SOLV? Is that the healthcare company? Solventum. I think this is. I, I think I remember reading something briefly about this. But truth be told, as soon as I... Yeah, it is. Okay. As soon as I sold out of 3M, I really put this company out of sight and out of mind. Um, so it's not one I've paid attention... I've really paid attention to for, for a handful of months now. But... Um, yeah, I mean, it looks to be a slow grower, you know, which is okay. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Doesn't pay a dividend. Maybe the maybe it's just too soon to. Maybe it's too soon to tell. Let's see what some of the comments say here. Okay, so the IPO was eighty dollars each when they started trading. at a basically a 13 PE. Okay. What's it, what's it at now? So it's, it's definitely come down a lot. I guess I could just looked at this, huh? It's definitely come down a lot, um, since going public or since being spun off officially. So it's, and it's been a few weeks or a couple weeks now, at least interesting a few weeks now, even. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't really have any thoughts on this company um at this point in time. I think it's too soon to tell. Let's see. Okay. So the going back to SCHG, let's just do this cuz I'm seeing it in the live chat. Going back to SCHG versus VU, it's the returns. So let's go to the charting. Yeah, okay. So that makes sense. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty uh, pretty clear reason to invest in one over the other. Okay. You know, sometimes the answers guys are right in front of your face. You don't even consider them. Um Yeah, dividend dude, thoughts on the news about Zoetis today? We just kind of talked about that earlier in the stream. Yeah, we we talked about that earlier in the in the stream here. Um, but just a quick recap: it seems to me that 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 news is going to be short term. You know, it's just a little short term uh, issue for the company. I don't think it's going to be very impactful for them from a long term perspective. So, um, you know, and otherwise, like the comp the company is financially firing on all cylinders. It's a great looking company. And um, yeah, no worries. No need to apologize. I'm happy to just rehash it again. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm fine with it. It's we'll see what happens from here, but it's not something that I I would throw the baby out with the bathwater for. So um, you know, I'll, I'll take the the eight percent drop. It's it's yeah, it's looking it's look is Zoetis man. It's just looking starting to look really impossible to ignore. Um. Okay, so muted. I, I should have mentioned this earlier. Thank you for asking. How often is the dividend happy hour? So the dividend happy hour is every single week. We do this uh, every Friday night at 5 p.m. Pacific time, which would be 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, there are some rare occasions where I, I just do not stream on Friday nights. Like if I'm busy or if there's plans or just something gets in the way, then I won't stream. But um, normal week, we're doing this every Friday night, same time, same place. So 
uh, be there or be square. Um, Darth, what are you doing, man? Would you want to, uh, you want to hop on here? Want to hang out this, uh, hang out with us, these hop on the stream this next 30 minutes and help me close it out. If you're around, I can, uh, I can send you the link. Um, okay. Blair, this is a good question, I think. So I have 6,000 to spend on my Roth. Right now, my portfolio is SCH, SHD, SHG, and VU, 23 years old. Do I keep going with 33% for all holdings, or do I change any percentages with the next 6K? You know, I, I think when in doubt, yeah, I don't know. And this is another thing, too. You know what? Maybe there's not much of a need to own both SCHG and VU. You know, maybe one you can get by with one or the other. And hypothetically, let's say that you were to get rid of one of them and just have SCHD and then one of the other ones. I don't think you can go wrong with just a 50-50 split between the two. That's probably like a good, safe way to go. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Jeremy, going to keep it up post-marital bliss? Are you, I'm guessing you're talking about the live stream, right? Um, yeah, so two weeks from today, I will not be streaming just because of the wedding. but. Um, after that, the week after that, we should be, should be back in business. So, um, yeah, just, just that one week I won't be around. And then our honeymoon's not going to be until July. So we've got some time before that, but Darth, man, what, um, you want me to send you the link to the stream on Twitter? Where's the best place, uh, place for me to send that to you? Uh, Kevin, this is a tough question, man. If you had to pick which one, Zoetis or Yum, Yum Brands is another one that I'm, I'm kind of looking at right now. But um, I've spent more time with Zoetis so far, and I, I think the financials on that one look look better. So I would say Zoetis. And I, you know, real quick, let me pull this up. So I don't really, I haven't really shown this for a while, my stock analyzer spreadsheet. But let's just take a look, like at some of the some of the financial highlights for Zoetis. I'm going to put this on the screen. It's going to take a second to load. But I'm feeling really, really good about this. There's a lot. If we just look at some of the metrics once it loads, it's it looks pretty, pretty, pretty. So uh oh. I see my man uh Paco. I gotta give a shout out to my friend Paco, who I think is watching the the live stream. Paco, if you're here, man. Thanks for tuning in, senor. Um, let's see. Okay, it loaded. So here we go, guys. This is uh, what we're looking at. This is Zoetis right here. Okay. And so this spreadsheet that I made shows just some of the financial highlights at a glance. It's a really, um, really shorthand way for me just to see how the financials for a company are trending. So um, revenue we can see is really growing up at a nice rate. We'll take a look at the, some of the averages in just a moment. Earnings per share. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what you want to see right there. Free cash flow per share. Uh, very similar as well. It has its ups and downs, right? But we can see, I mean, if we just drew a trend line, it'd look something like that. Uh, dividends per share. Obviously the growth there is very substantial. We do see some buybacks here as well. So shares outstanding is going down. And then return on invested capital has been increasing as the years go on as well. So uh, 10 years ago, it was about 14%. Today, you know, we're looking close to 21%. So, I, you know, I think just based on all this, I, I can't see any reason why this, this company wouldn't be a solid compounder over the years, just the way the financials are trending. Um, and if we look at some of the averages here, like across the last 10 years, revenue per share grown by 7.4%. So steady earnings per share is growing at a much more aggressive rate. So over time, this company is becoming more profitable. That's great. Uh, free cash flow per share is growing at a, a more aggressive rate than the revenue per share. So that's fantastic. Um, and as we can see here, the margins very incredible. Gross profit margin sixty seven percent on average over the last ten years. A little bit higher in um, in recent times sixty eight percent, but nonetheless very impressive. Uh, net income margin twenty seven and a half percent quite a bit higher than the 10 year average as well. So once again, this company is becoming um, considerably more profitable over time. Don't pay any attention to this. This is not accurate at the moment, but um, otherwise guys, everything else with Zoetis looking sweet, um, looking very sweet. Darth, where are you at? Are we, uh, 
Am I sending you the link? Where do you want me to send it, man? Um, real quick, Oliver says, have you bought more Visa? I have. I bought more Visa this week. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to do like two things at once. Yes, I bought some more Visa this week. Um, and uh, I, I've pretty much bought Visa every single week so far this year. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit more about this in Sunday's video. So I'll just I'll just leave it at that. But no. But I did buy some more Visa this week. And I'm up to almost 15 shares of Visa. So. Okay. This is a good question. Janice says, this month, I'm going to buy some shares of Nike, Hershey Company, Comcast, and General Dynamics. Which one do you like the least? Truthfully, I don't know. Um, I don't know General Dynamics. I haven't researched Comcast enough to have a serious opinion on it, but I do think more highly of Comcast than I do AT&T and Verizon. I like the Hershey company and I like Nike, so it's it's tough for me to say. Darth man, where do you want me to send the uh, the stream link so you can hop on here? Dividend dude, the bad thing about Zoetis is that the revenue growth has been pretty disappointing to say the least. Uh, that, I think it's like 6% recently, which concerns me. Um, well, it's steady. Gmail, you want me to Gmail it to you? Okay. I will do that real quick. Bear with me, guys. We're going to get the man himself on here. Um, let me see. Darth. I don't, what's your, uh, Darth, what's your email? <laughs> I don't, I don't have it in my, um, my thing here. Let me invite. Okay. I'll send it to you on, on Twitter. Okay. I'll, I'll message it to you over there real quick. All right. Sorry guys. <laughs> I'll check out the uh the live chat here in just a moment. Let me get this link over to Mr. Darth. And we'll be good to go. Boom. Okay. I just sent it to you, man. Um all right. Let's keep going. Oh. Okay, this is this is actually interesting. So I, I don't know if I've ever gotten a question like this. This is kind of cool. I've gotten an offer to become a financial advisor for one of the top firms in the country, pretty much one of my dream jobs, but I'm conflicted. Do you have any advice for me? Well, first I'd ask, like, what are you, you know, what are you conflicted about? What's the uh what's the variable here? What what if it's one of your dream jobs, what are, what makes you conflicted? And I'll um it's that it. Darth. Yeah. Yo. Let me, uh, I actually need to get, let me put my headphones on one sec. Can you hear me? Got to use these, the big, the big boys here. All right. Can you hear Hold me on. now? There we go. All right. I just want to, but I can sure. hear myself. Mm -hmm. All right. It's always, uh, all right. Um, all right. Let's try this. We good? Yeah. Can you guys hear us okay? Oh. Hopefully. You can hear Darth. Can you guys hear me? Is there echo? All is good. Okay. I think we're good. How are you, man? Uh, I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm like taking a little bit of a study break. I'm getting ready for NP boards. I graduated in August, mm. took a few months off to relax, turbocharge the dividend portfolio, and it's time to get back to business. There you go, man. What's uh what's on the agenda tonight? Um probably gonna listen to another lecture, just getting ready for um the exam. 
I'm kind of in my cutting mode, so I'm not really going to, you know, I'm really watching what I eat and drink and stuff. So, you know, I'm trying to get ready for that, uh, for the summer and stuff. Get ready for the pool. Hold on. There we go. Hold on, uh, everyone. Sorry, guys. Is that me? All right. Let me see if it's me. It might be me. Oh, my goodness. You know what? There. Okay. There we go. Okay. I think we're almost there. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. And let's go there. Can you hear me, Darth? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, we're good. We're good. Sorry, man. So what, what were you saying there a moment ago? Oh, I uh, just, um, you know, I took six months off uh, since I graduated in August. And uh, I'm still travel nursing. I'm actually precepting a new graduate nurse. So I'm going to probably travel nurse until the end of uh, December and then start working as a nurse practitioner. You going to stick around Ohio? Don't know. No idea. Wherever I think Vegas is still on the there. table, right? What's that? Vegas is still on the table, right? Never know. Cleveland Clinic, Vegas. You never know. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us what's uh, what's happening in the portfolio. I added a lot of stocks. A lot of stocks. I mean, everybody always asks me how many. Um, I definitely went back and target. I've been buying Nike. Nike's been going. They've been taking a beating and I'm just capitalizing. I've been buying some Starbucks. Uh, went after Procter and Gamble with that dividend hike. That was nice news for all of us that started to be investors. I don't know what was going on with M M1 Finance, but I was trying to add Comcast too. I don't know if it was a issue with shares, but uh, went back in Altria. I know it's kind of contradictory with myself being a nurse. I mean, it's a sin stock. I I hope everybody stops smoking, but it's just not going to happen. Um, Vici, I've been buying, uh, Prologis, um, Iron Mountain, I've been going pretty heavy in that. Um, I'm back in Chevron. Um, I'm kind of focusing on dividend growth stocks. I mean, they've been down for a while. I know I chase high yield as well, but with the dividend growth stocks being so down right now, it's time to capitalize on them. This dividend growth always wins. We always said that before. I mean, it's, it's, really nice to have a dividend growth stock that's at a discount right now. It's pretty crazy. Like when you, when you look at, and I'll pull up an example on the screen here, but it's pretty crazy to look at what your yield on cost will turn into with some of these dividend growth stocks over the years. And it's hard to get excited. To, I, understandably, it's hard to get excited about seeing something with a, you know, one and a half percent yield or a, a half a percent yield, even in some cases, but over a long period of time, which is when, all of us are going to be, you know, investing even 10, 15, 20 years, that low starting yield could really grow into something meaningful. And so what we're looking at here is lows, for example. So lows, just quick dividend stats, 1.9% starting yield, 18.65% five-year growth rate. And I think their 10-year dividend growth rate is a bit higher than that at 20%. So very impressive. But this is a good example, like low starting yield, not very exciting. But if you would have bought lows 10 years ago on April 12th, 2014, your yield on cost today would be 9.4%, which is That's insane. Yeah, which is higher than a lot of the high yielding stocks I think a lot of us are are considering like a I think it's pr probably pretty comparable to where Altria is at right about now. Um and just for fun too, while we're on the subject, what would this look like for Altria? Cuz you know, they're a dividend king, so Okay. And it's, so it's not much better, right? Like it actually, if you go back even less time, four years, if you would have bought it, dang, at the depths of the COVID crash, your yield on cost would be about 11 and a half percent, but still that's not too much higher than what we saw with Lowe's. Yeah. I mean, Lowe's is always busy. They're always busy. And that's one yeah. thing that really attracted me to Starbucks to buy Starbucks one, they're down. Um, they have pretty decent coffee. I mean, I buy their beans and stuff 
And um, I mean, they're everywhere. They're busy. And the product that you're drinking, they're busy. They're, they're selling yeah. products like crazy. So, you know, I, I had to really think and relax and really refocus on my strategy because, you know, you don't always want to focus on dividend growth stocks. I mean, NBDY, CLNY, they've done really well, but the way they've been buying, you know, my dividend growth stocks, it's fantastic. Probably the next two to three years, the, the higher yielders, like the, my dividend growth stocks are going to overpower the higher yielders. So it's going to be, you know, exciting to see. If you had to pick, um, kind of fun question. If you had to pick, let's say three of each, three more high growth dividend stocks and three high yield stocks, what would be on that list? Well, I mean, Costco is one of them. Microsoft I've been buying. I'm going to say that. I'm not trying to be biased. Um, there's too many. I mean, Starbucks, is a, it's, a, it's at a discount right now. Uh, I would say Starbucks. Um, the higher yielders, the low dividend growth, I'd probably say Capital Southwest Corporation, CSWC. Um, I'm going to probably say Saratoga Investment Corp, SAR. Um, and Look at FSK. That. Yeah, I CS mean, interesting. It's a high yielder. It's a business development company. I mean, it's a risk. I mean, that's why I'm well diversified with my dividend portfolio. I mean, I have. I mean, making it to hundred thousand dollars is great. I mean, right now, and somebody did uh, mention uh, United Health Group. That's a great one too. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. needs insurance. What's the uh, um, what's the issues going on with UNH right now? I I just think it you know it fluctuates a lot. Um, might be a little overvalued. Some of these stocks are pretty overvalued. I mean, just just the way I see things. I mean, that's one that I may add in the future. Um, but I, I already have a lot of dividend stocks. Um, a lot of them that have beaten. Actually, uh, probably about seven or eight of them I own have beaten the S and P five hundred. But you know, the dividend growth is what matters, and, and we've emphasized this numerous times that um, dividend growth always wins. So you know, owning um, some of the yield max ETFs have been great. And actually, I'm invited to be on um, the New York Stock Exchange with the people from Yield Max in June. I don't know if I can make really? it. But that's going to be pretty cool, but it has really helped with buying my dividend growth stock. So I can't really say no to that. You, man, I feel like that would be a once in a lifetime opportunity. You should definitely try yeah. to go to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to work around it and see, but that would be uh, pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So jumping over to the, uh, the chat real quick. What do you think about this? Starbucks is not in a high growth category. Procter and Gamble is a better bet. Man, I like them both. Love me some Procter and Gamble. You know, and I was actually kind of, I was kind of surprised to see Procter and Gamble raise their dividend as much as they did, seven percent. I feel like that's pretty pretty nice for them. Well, I mean, they're an in demand company. I mean, how many things do we buy that's Procter and Gamble? I mean, I'm literally looking across my room. I see soap. I have Vicks. I mean, I've been using Vicks because I had a cold recently. I have. Uh, I mean, see toothpaste, um, Tide Pods. I mean, look at how many things that we use with everyday products, Procter & Gamble. I mean, my yeah. detergent and stuff and, um, you know, it's kind of how it works. But uh... yeah, Procter & Gamble is one of those you just, I just don't feel like you have to worry about for the exact reason you said. People are still going to be wearing deodorant, hopefully using toothpaste and um, washing their clothes for, for many years to come. And I'm trying to think like, oh, excuse me. I try to think about the things that could dethrone, not necessarily dethrone, but but could render a company like that obsolete. Like what could what could take the place of Tide and Crest and, um, you know, Old Spice and stuff like that? It's it's. It's a hard thing to to think about. 
I don't think so. It's like, who's going to top Coca-Cola and Pepsi, <laughs> you know, with products? It's just, they're so dominant and they're so... Cel Celsius, maybe. Well, Celsius is no, doing no. pretty well. But, um, Let's see what else we got going on here in the chat. A lot of a uh, lot of debate here about Starbucks. Is it a good one? Is it a bad one? Is it high growth? Is it not high growth? Mountain High has coffee being scattered all over his desk. <laughs> Matt Money says our desk. Nice. Uh, Procter and Gamble is my con conservative holding. Conservative holding. I think it is a pretty conservative holding. Like I said, it is. It is definitely one of those. One of those uh, sleep well at night stocks for sure. Yeah. There we go. Striper Kid picked up 10 shares of Starbucks this week. Yeah. This is a good point, too, from Shamir. People also won't give up cell service, but that doesn't mean I want to jump in and invest in AT&T or Verizon. Hmm. It's only a matter of time with Verizon. Like, how long are they going to hold that dividend? Is it... Um, let's look at Verizon over here. What's the... I want to. I wonder what the free cash flow payout ratio is. So jumping over here, just kind of some just quick eyeball. So if we go to the cash flow statement, free cash flow per share, we're looking at three dollars and seven cents right here, compared to this is just one year, so not anything crazy. So three hundred four, two sixty four. So it's still covered from the free cash flow, which is which is good. I don't know. I'd be I I I would be surprised if they there was a point where they didn't. Um, I mean, anything could happen. It's not guaranteed. But I'd be surprised if there was a point where AT and T and Verizon did not pay the dividend. I mean, they're big companies and stuff. It just I don't know how long the dividend growth is going to be there for Verizon. Yeah, I mean they 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 could stop growing it. That's for sure. But uh, I still think it'll, I still think it'll be intact. We'll see though. Uh, Oliver says, "I'm just curious about Starbucks. What you guys like and what you don't like." So, qualitatively, I, I want to get some more of your thoughts on this too, Darth. Qualitatively, I mean, one of the one of the things that's undeniable about Starbucks is that it's it's pretty much pretty much always busy, uh, morning, mid afternoon. Evening time. I was actually when I went to Chipotle yesterday last night for dinner. There's a Starbucks right next door. There were there was people in the drive through. This was at 7 p.m. There were people in the drive through. There were people inside the Starbucks, um, just sitting down, hanging out. And um, you see that everywhere you go. I stayed at the Flamingo. It's just a busy location. I stayed at the Flamingo a couple weeks ago. And um, same thing in the morning. Get up to go get coffee downstairs. Full line at Starbucks. Right outside the Flamingo in the Link Promenade, there's another Starbucks. That one was busy as well. So the, the point I'm trying to make is people are crazy about their Starbucks. It's kind of like, in a way, it's it's a it can be a bit like um like Coca Cola and Pepsi. There's Coca Cola people, there are Pepsi people. Coca Cola people do not drink Pepsi, and vice versa. Um, a, a lot of Starbucks customers are are religious in that about it in that sense as well. Not all of them. Some of them will jump over to Dutch Bros, but and some of them will go to Pete's, but there are some people who are just as religious about Starbucks. So qualitatively, like the, it, what I'm trying to get to is they have a very strong hold on on their customers. And even in previous, you know, downturns in the economy, if you go back to 2008, 2009, 2010, people were still going to Starbucks. They weren't going as often, but one way to describe it is, and there are customers who do this, that will go in the morning, then they'll go back in the afternoon. They'll go sometimes two or three times a day. There are people who eat, a majority of their meals at Starbucks and uh, especially very busy people. Uh, but during that time I was reading, reading about this and onward the book by Howard Schultz basically described it as people were still going to Starbucks. They just weren't going as often. So the people who were going two or three times a day, they cut back to maybe just going once a day, but they still went. Um, and so that's, that's one of the indicators that just, they, they have a really strong hold on there on their uh, customers. And there's a lot of Starbucks inside hospitals and you wouldn't believe how busy they are. Mm -hmm. This is another I mean, good point too. 
with their rewards program, they basically have all this float that they're taking in from people loading money onto their Starbucks cards on their phones and to use for a future purchase at Starbucks. And, um, you know, they've got multiple billions of dollars at this point sitting in, sitting in cash from that. And that number is growing every year too, which, which tells you that people, more people are signing up to be a part of the reward. So more loyal customers are sticking with Starbucks. Anyway, you want to jump in there? Uh, with, with Starbucks, I mean, their name speaks for itself. I mean, people buy it. They don't need to buy it. They'll do it for a status thing. It's like buying a Tesla. You know, people are buying a cyber truck for status. Um, it, it, do you really need a cyber truck? Do you really need to brew your own coffee? People aren't going to do that. So they're, they're just extremely successful. I mean, you got bros, you got these other coffee companies. Good luck trying to compete with Starbucks. They're the best in the world and they're going to stay the best in the world. I mean, Luckin tried to compete with them. Luckin was very shady in um, China and blew up in their face, but uh, it's looking really good right now. Dutch Bros is kind of interesting. I think Dutch Bros is a different type of customer. Um, Dutch Bros, I have a hard time explaining what this type of person is who goes to Dutch Bros. I mean, everyone goes, all types of people go to Dutch Bros, but you go to a Dutch Bros and you see the the people working there. They're they're most they're all younger people. You know, they they dress a certain way, they listen to certain type a certain type of music. There's a type, I guess is what I'm trying to say, and I can't really describe it, but there's a type that goes to Dutch Bros. And um that type is is different than the type that that goes to Starbucks. I'm not doing that justice, but that does exist. I need to think through that a little more so I can explain it better. It's not a bad place. I mean, honestly, I like Dutch Bros. Yeah. No. Well, let's see. Let's see these last um, couple of messages here, and then we're going to wrap it up for the night. So, do, do, do. I see Agree Realty. I see Starbucks versus Dutch Bros. Okay. Well, I think this is a fine place to wrap it up. Um, Darth, man, thank you for uh, jumping on with me these last. Yeah last few minutes. I hope you don't get too, too wild tonight. Avoid all those yield traps out there. No, I'm laying low for a while, just hitting the books. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, tell, tell me about Vegas with Russ. I, I, how was that? Uh, it was a lot of fun, man. So we just, uh, we ended up just getting together for a beer. Like we were hanging out for maybe an hour, hour and a half. Um, we just met up at the, he was staying at the Paris with his family. So we just met up there. And, um, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool to, to meet him and hang out with him. And Russ and I will, Russ and I talk, we, we talk pretty, I don't want to say incessantly, but we, we talk a lot. We'll send, you know, kind of like you, you and I were doing earlier today. Uh, he'll send me voice messages. I'll send them back. And so we do that a lot. And so, you know, getting a, getting a beer together was just kind of like an extension of that. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Notice of fun. you said beer and, and not white claw. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it was a cover up. We actually uh both both got our own six pack of white claw. So oh, you're gonna have to explain we, that to uh Shamir. I know, man. Shamir's I, I'm used to Shamir being disappointed in me, but but no, man, we missed you at um sometime you'll have to come out come out to Vegas so we can do the same. It was fun. Yeah, once I'm done with boards, I mean, see what happens. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, this is, uh, we're going to wrap it up here, guys. Darth, thank you again, man. Everyone, thanks for tuning in this last hour. And as you know, we'll be back same time, same place next week. Uh, all you guys keep up the great work. Do like Striper Kid here says, don't forget to hit the like button. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you, guys.